Nicotine suppresses your appetite and makes you burn slightly more calories. Cool, but here's what nobody wants to admit. Most of you aren't using nicotine for productivity. You're addicted and making excuses. It helps me focus. Yeah, so does meth, but we're not calling that a life hack, are we? Yo, it's Zirk. Today we're talking about nicotine, because apparently every finance bro and their trust fund thinks walking around with a nicotine pouch makes them Andrew Tate. Spoiler, you just look like you're storing food for winter in your lip. The real question is whether nicotine is actually performance enhancing or if Big Tobacco just figured out how to sell you lung cancer in mint flavor. Quick history lesson, because you failed school. Tobacco was cultivated 6,000 years ago in the Americas. People chewed it, smoked it, got absolutely blasted off it. 1492, Columbus shows up, sees native smoking, thinks, I can monetize this, brings it back to Europe. Europeans try it and lose their goddamn minds. This is the best thing since bread, they said, probably. Some French dude named Jean Nico gets rich selling it to aristocrats, gives us the word nicotine. Back then, they smoked it in clay pipes or literally snorted tobacco powder called snuff. S-N-U-F-F, -F, that's what they called it. Like they wanted it to sound as sketchy as possible. Hey bro, you got any of that snuff? Sounds like something you'd buy behind a 7-Eleven from a guy with neck tattoos. 1880s, the Bonsack machine gets invented. Mass produces cigarettes. Game over. Prices drop to nothing. Everyone's smoking. Your grandma's smoking. Your dog's probably smoking. Babies are chain-smoking Marlboros in their cribs. 1964, the Surgeon General announces, hey idiots, smoking causes cancer. Everyone acts shocked. The next 60 years is the tobacco industry desperately trying to sell you the same drug without the your lungs turn into charcoal side effect. 1984, nicotine gum. 1991, patches. 2003, vapes. 2016, pouches. 2020s, we've got nicotine toothpicks, lozenges, films, probably nicotine suppositories by next year. If there's a hole in your body, someone's figured out how to shove nicotine into it. Why do people use this? Because it actually works, that's why. Nicotine hits your nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, dumps dopamine and norepinephrine into your brain. Result? Instant focus, faster reactions, you feel like you just unlocked your brain's turbo mode. Research shows it improves working memory and sustained attention, especially when you're sleep deprived. Running on three hours of sleep and need to finish a presentation? Nicotine will keep you functional when you should be unconscious. It's basically legal speed, but somehow less sketchy. It boosts your mood by spiking serotonin and beta endorphins. Mild euphoria, reduced fatigue. So instead of feeling like death while working, you feel good. That's powerful and exactly why it's addictive. Your brain goes, oh, we like this, let's do this forever. It suppresses appetite and slightly increases metabolism. Useful for cutting weight, but the effect is tiny compared to real fat loss drugs. But for short term, I don't want to eat this entire pizza, it works. And here's a weird one, it steadies your hands. Unlike clenbuterol, which makes you shake like you're having a seizure, nicotine makes you steady. That's why surgeons and competitive shooters use it. Your surgeon probably has Zin pouches in during your operation. He's not smoking in the OR anymore, that's progress. Here's where it gets interesting. How bad is nicotine really? Because there's a massive difference between smoking a cigarette and using a pouch. Smoking, you get nicotine plus carbon monoxide, tar, and literally thousands of toxic combustion byproducts. The result, lung cancer, COPD, where breathing becomes a full-time job, cardiovascular disease, impotence because your blood vessels are destroyed, the works. Research shows 90% of nicotine's harm comes from burning shit and inhaling it. So here's your free advice. Do not smoke. I don't care if it looks cool in movies. You know what else looked cool in movies? Asbestos and lead paint. Don't smoke. You'll smell like an ashtray had sex with a dumpster fire, and you'll die wheezing like Darth Vader without the cool suit. Chewing tobacco. Slightly less catastrophic than smoking, but you're still putting fermented plant matter in your mouth for hours. You get heavy metals, carcinogens, all kinds of hell. The result? Face cancer. They'll remove parts of your mouth, your jaw, your tongue. You'll look like a before picture in a medical textbook. Don't dip. It's only better than smoking because smoking is literally one of the worst things you can do to your body short of eating uranium. Vaping. Much safer than smoking, still not safe. You're inhaling formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, 
ultra-fine particles, emerging research shows lung dysfunction and cardiovascular stress, but it's orders of magnitude better than cigarettes. If your choices are smoking or vaping, vape. But if you can avoid both, do that. So what about the clean methods? Pouches, gums, lozenges, toothpicks, when you remove all the combustion and fermented leaf garbage, what's left? Still some problems. Your heart rate increases by 10 beats per minute constantly. Over decades, this shortens your life. Your blood pressure goes up, your arteries stiffen, your insulin sensitivity drops. High dose pouches, six to 12 milligrams, can cause gum recession and mouth ulcers. The CDC is tracking rising mouth ulcer rates in teens who look like squirrels storing nicotine pouches. Nicotine before bed destroys your REM sleep. Don't use it within two hours of sleep unless you enjoy feeling like garbage. If you're pregnant, don't touch nicotine. Obvious, but apparently needs to be said. We don't have long-term studies on these new products. There might be issues we haven't discovered yet. You're basically a guinea pig. Congrats. So yes, nicotine has downsides, even when clean. But we're comparing elevated heart rate to lung cancer. These are not equivalent harms. How addictive is nicotine? Depends on delivery speed. Cigarettes hit your brain in 10 seconds. That first drag after a stressful day, instant relief. Your brain goes, more of this forever. That's why cigarettes are so insanely addictive. Pouches and gums take five to 15 minutes, substantially less addictive. Patches take hours. Almost nobody gets hooked on patches. If you're under 25, your brain is extremely vulnerable to nicotine addiction. Your neurons are still forming. You're basically asking to get addicted. Over 25, you're safer, but not immune. Most people who start using nicotine end up addicted. They tell themselves they're just using it for focus while hitting their vape every 30 seconds. If you're one of those people with a vape permanently attached to your hand, you're not optimizing productivity. You're just addicted. Own it. If you're going to use nicotine despite everything I just said, here's how not to completely destroy yourself. Use two to four milligram gum or three to six milligram pouches max. Don't touch 12 milligram products unless you're trying to speed run cardiovascular disease. Don't vape, pouches are cleaner. Do not smoke. This should be obvious by now, but apparently some of you need it repeated. Keep total daily dose under 10 milligrams. I know that's not much. That's because we're talking about safe use, not how much can I take before my heart explodes. Use at least one to two milligrams before deep work, 15 minutes ahead. Don't repeat for at least 90 minutes, ideally several hours. You're not a machine. Give your body a break. Before workouts, two to three milligrams, 20 to 30 minutes out. Might help performance slightly, probably not worth it. Stop at least two hours before bed or your sleep will be garbage. Ideal pattern, a few times per day, separated by hours, not constant use. If you're using nicotine more than three to four times daily, you're addicted. Cycle it, three weeks on, one week off to reset receptors, or use Monday through Friday, take weekends off. Though let's be honest, 90% of you won't do this because you're already hooked. If quitting is hard, taper with patches. 21 milligrams for two weeks, 14 milligrams for two weeks, seven milligrams for two weeks, then zero. Will nicotine get you addicted? Almost certainly. Can you use it responsibly with minimal harm? Technically, yes. Will you actually do that? Probably not. Most people start with, I'll just use it for focus and end up dependent within weeks. I'm not your DAR officer. I'm not going to lie and say nicotine is as dangerous as heroin. It's not. Used correctly through clean delivery methods, the risks are manageable. But the gap between used correctly and how people actually use it is the Grand Canyon. If you've never used nicotine, don't start. The tiny benefits aren't worth the addiction risk. If you already use it, switch to the cleanest method possible and keep doses low. And seriously, do not smoke. I'm Zirk. Stop pretending your nicotine addiction is a productivity hack and just admit you're chasing a buzz. See you next time.